name is Jana and I'm so happy to welcome you to session four of Respect the Dignity of All, Kids Engaging Racial Equity. Today's song and prayer will be led by Chaplain Ben Guerin. Our song is called Set It Right and it's based on words by Sojourner Truth. She was a black woman who was enslaved and fought for freedom, women's rights, and the end of slavery. There's a great trouble in the land. We're gonna set it right again. There's a great trouble in the land. We're gonna set it right again. There's a great trouble in the land. We're gonna set it right again. We're gonna set it right. Set it right again. We're putting our feet on the path of love. We're gonna set it right again. We're putting our feet on the path of love. We're gonna set it right again. We're putting our feet on the path of love. We're gonna set it right again. We're gonna set it right, set it right, set it right again. Keep building beloved community. We're gonna set it right again. Keep building beloved community. We're gonna set it right again. Keep building beloved community. We're gonna set it right again. We're gonna set it right, set it right again. We're gonna set it right, set it right again. We're gonna set it right, set it right. Set it right again. Let us pray. God, I praise you. God, help me let your love into my heart. God, help me to care for others. God, help me to rest. Amen. Hi, I'm Debbie from St. Peter's in Litchfield Park. When a person is baptized in our church, they and the whole church make promises. And one of those promises is to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. Through this series, we are learning how to respect the dignity of all people and love each other as Jesus taught us to do. Some weeks we talk about an idea or a question. Other weeks we talk about something from the Bible. And every week we hear stories. This week and next we will be talking about how to live with justice and mercy. God calls us to live with justice and mercy in Micah 6, 8. He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. So what does this mean? First, let's talk about how God shows us what is good. God shows us what is good by sending messages right to our hearts. When I experience something good, my heart feels like a warm, shining light spreading all the way from my nose to my toes and makes me smile and I feel happy. When God shows me that something is good, my heart feels like sunshine on a sunny day. 
An example of something that fills my heart with this feeling is friendship. Think of a time when God showed you something good. How did it feel? When we see something wrong, God tells us about that too. For me, the feeling is like a storm. My heart feels dark and dreary and cold. Sometimes it feels like loud wind and thunder are pounding so hard in my heart that I want to explode. And sometimes it, tears fall like rain from my eyes. Sometimes I want to run away from this feeling. When I feel like this, I know it is God showing me that something is wrong. I feel like this when I see people of color being hurt and killed because of their skin color. I also feel like this when I see the environment being hurt or destroyed. Think of a time when God showed you something wrong. How did it feel? So what does God want us to do when we experience something that is wrong? God wants us to act with justice and mercy. One way we can describe justice is love in action. We can think of mercy as helping someone or something who is hurt or in danger. We can think of mercy like someone helping you get a Band-Aid after you trip and fall over a rock and scrape your knee. Justice is then moving the rock out of the way so neither you nor anyone else gets hurt by it again. Acting with justice and mercy toward others is part of being a follower of Jesus, also called a disciple. An important part of being a disciple of Jesus is listening to the needs of the people we are trying to help. The last phrase in the verse from Micah says, Walk humbly with your God. To be humble means we don't need to call attention to ourselves as we work for justice and mercy. Disciples work to lift up others because that is what God calls people to do, not to get praise and glory for their actions. Now we're going to read a book together called Something Happened in Our Town by Marianne Solano. Marietta Collins, and Anne Hazard. The book is illustrated by Jennifer Zavoin and is being read with permission from the American Psychological Association. In this book, a black man is shot by the police, and the children in the book, one black and one white, want to understand why. This book will help us think more about justice and how to identify injustice. Something bad happened in our town. The news was on the TV, the radio, and the internet. The grown-ups didn't think the, ch the kids knew about it. But the kids in Ms. Garcia's class heard some older kids talking about it, and they had questions. After school, Emma asked her mother, why did the police shoot that man? It was a mistake, said her mother. I feel sad for the man and his family. Yes, the police thought he had a gun, said her father. It wasn't a mistake, said her sister Liz. The cops shot him because he was black. Emma was confused. He is brown, not black, she said. Some black people have dark brown skin, and some have light brown skin, Emma's father explained. Black usually means African American. Most of their ancestors were brought here from Africa as slaves. I know what a slave is, said Emma. That's when you have to do whatever the other person says. Yes. Slaves had to do whatever white people told them to do. Even after slavery ended, white people didn't let black people live where they wanted, go to school with white people, or vote. Who are white people? White people came here from places in Europe, or Russia, or other countries. We are white, even though our skin is light tan.
Did our family do those bad things long ago? asked Emma. Yes, answered her mother. Back then, many white people thought that they were better than black people, even though it wasn't true. Liz added, some white people still think black men and boys are dangerous, even though they're not. Was the man that got shot dangerous? asked Emma. No, her mother said. Shooting him was a mistake. It was a mistake that is part of a pattern. Like the pattern on my blanket? Emma asked. Yes, but this pattern is being nice to white people and mean to black people. It is an unfair pattern. Suppose you had a birthday party and invited everyone in your class except the black kids, her mother said. How would the black kids feel? They would be sad, Emma said, or mad. And you would be missing out because you never know who is going to be your best friend, said Liz. And you can help others to be fair, said her mother. Like telling Anna to stop teasing Ling about her name, asked Emma. Her mother gave her a hug. Yes, just like that. In another house, Josh asked his mother, can police go to jail? Yes, said his mother. Why do you ask? That white policeman who shot the black man, said Josh, will he go to jail? What he did was wrong, said his mother. But he won't go to jail, said his father. Why not? asked Josh. Cops stick up for each other, said Josh's brother Malcolm, and they don't like black men. Josh was confused. Why not? Some police are black. You're right, said his mother. Uncle James is a police officer, and so is my friend Kenya. There are many cops, black and white, who make good choices, said his father, but we can't always count on them to do what's right. Malcolm added, I could get stopped by the police just because I'm black, even if I don't do anything wrong. That's not fair, Josh said. What if it was a white man in the car? Would the police have shot him? They probably wouldn't have even stopped the car, said his father. Sometimes white people are treated better than black people, said his mother, but it's not right. Everybody should be treated fairly. Josh's mother gave him a hug. We're proud of who we are. Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King Jr., and Nelson Mandela were strong and brave black leaders. They showed us that we can stand up for our rights and set good examples for others. They were treated unfairly, but helped others to learn to be more fair. Some people haven't learned yet, said his father angrily. Why are you mad? asked Josh. I'm mad that we're still treated poorly sometimes, but I can use my anger to make things better, said his father. Black people have a lot of power if we work together to make change. I have power, Josh said, and I'm smart. His father smiled. You're right. His mother added, and you can change people's hearts by sticking up for someone who is not treated fairly. Like how Malcolm sticks up for me when the kids tease me about my glasses? Josh asked. He tells them to step off. Just like that, his parents said. The next day, 
a new kid joined Emma in Josh's class. His name was Omed, and he was from a country far away. Omad didn't know where to sit or what to do because it was his first day in school. He talked a little bit, but it was hard to understand him. He said he was learning English. After lunch, the class went outside to play soccer. Daniel and Sophia picked kids to be on their teams. All of the kids were picked to be on a team, except Omad. Daniel said Omad probably didn't know how to play because he was new. Sophia said Omad might not be good at soccer. Josh remembered what his mother said about sticking up for people who are treated unfairly. Emma remembered what her mother said about unfair patterns and birthday parties. All of a sudden, Omad wasn't alone. Emma and Josh were leading him to their team. We have enough kids on our team, Daniel said. We don't need him. But Josh was ready. Step off, he said. He's playing. Yeah, said Emma. We don't want to miss out. And just like that, Emma and Josh gained a new friend and started a better pattern in their school. Now that we have finished reading, something happened in our town. Think about how the book made you feel. What messages did God send you about the killing of the black man in the story? Did you feel any of the feelings we talked about for when God shows us that something is wrong? How about when Emma and Josh stood up for Omed? Did you feel any of the feelings we talked about for when God shows us that something is good? Our activity this week is to build an obstacle course. You'll find a short video with instructions on the private Respect the Dignity of All Facebook page. The link is in the notes below this video. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah from St. Barnabas in Scottsdale. Today we learned that God wants us to act with justice and mercy. We learned that justice means love in action and mercy means helping someone or something who is hurt or in danger. We read a book called Something Happened in Our Town that describes an injustice. We explored the messages God was sending us about that injustice and how we know when God is telling us something. In our first week, we heard a story about listening for God. Is there anything you want to add now to the ways you hear God? Or the ways you know God is telling you something? Let's pause the video and think about how we listen for God. Hi, I'm Father Mark from St. Philip's in the Hills in Tucson. And I want to share with you our closing song today. It's called Listen Up, People. Listen Up, People. And it's about the relationship between our prayer, our worship, and justice in the world. You know, our Lord uses prayer and worship to form us into a people of justice, a people who do justice and love mercy, who walk humbly with God. Let's learn the song together. Does something like this. Listen up, people, listen up, people, listen up, people, listen up, people, listen up, people all over the land. Worship and justice go hand in hand. Listen up, people, listen up, people, listen up, people, listen up, people, listen up, people all over the land. Worship and justice go hand in hand. 
Worship and justice go hand in hand. How about that? Let's see if we can sing the whole song through. The chorus repeats a bit through the song, so we'll get the chorus really well done, really in our minds. And let's see if we can do it with some accompaniment. Shall we? Shall we try? Will you sing with me? I hope you will. that go along with it. I'll bet you do. Let's pray together. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is. Amen. Mm -hmm.